Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, great to be back here in New York. Um, Solgold is a um, TSX and uh, LSE listed company. We're based in Australia, but we're predominantly Ecuadorian. 98% um, of our staff in Ecuador is uh, Ecuadorian. We have, uh, we're focused on Ecuador, which is the most underexplored part of the best copper belt on earth. Um, we already have one tier one project, which is the Alpella project. Um, we have the first mover advantage, very positive uh, and supportive uh, government and um, industry in Ecuador. Uh, you may have heard there was a recent challenge, uh, a petition to change the constitution. We've had just overwhelming support from government after that challenge came out, from Chamber of Commerce, um, many ministries, many industry leaders, and I think that's going to be shot down. It has, um, has about as much chance of succeeding as Julian Assange has as moving back into the Ecuadorian consulate in London. Uh, very positive, um, strong shareholder base, significantly invested management and um, unrivaled pipeline of projects. Not only do we have one tier one porphyry there, we have 72 projects spanning 3,200 uh, kilometres squared right across the country. Um, we have a very strong shareholder base. I'll show you the shareholders soon. Our PEA came out recently, um, confirms really strong economics. Some of the reasons this is going to be so economic is the geometry of the ore body. It'll all come down in a, in a small footprint as a block cave. It's very soft ore, fractured. It'll cave and mill cheaply. And the, the outstanding infrastructure surrounding the, the Cascabel deposit there. So looking forward for the rest of this year, um, we see us spending about 22 million on um, Alpala to get it, uh, we're going straight to pre-feasibility, about 15 million on regional exploration, uh, sorry, feasibility studies and 30 million on regional exploration. So here's the, uh, the, the logistics infrastructure at Cascabel. Fantastic, there's a road that goes through it. We have cheap hydropower, there's a port. These are all the things we don't have to build. It's at an easy to work elevation. There's a big local population. About 60 kilometers away, there's a city of Ibarra with a couple of hundred thousand people. This is gonna cost, save about three billion in costs uh, as compared to building this mine high and dry in the Chilean or Peruvian Andes. There's our uh, second mineral resource estimate based on 133,000 metres of drilling. It came out in January this year. We're now up to almost 200,000 metres of drilling. So this gave us about 2.95 billion tonnes at about 0.5% copper. That's the, uh, the geometry of um, the Alpella deposit. It's still open in many directions. We're still putting holes in. We have 10 rigs drilling at the moment. We're still expanding this and we, we um, expect to get our third resource estimate out by the end of the year. The PEA was exceptional. NPV of between 4.1 and $4.5 billion. IRR, very quick payback. We can pay this back in um, under four years. So between about 25% IRR. The pre-production capex is about 2.4 to 2.8 billion dollars. As I said, we'd be looking at double this if we're up high and dry in the Chilean or Argentine Andes. Yeah, under four year payback. Um, the commodity, firstly copper, we expect to produce about 200,000 tonnes of copper per year for the first 25 years, about 438,000 um, ounces of gold. And also silver is significant, about 1.4 million ounces of silver per year. Um, there's the uh, cash flow chart. As you can see, the first 25 years, super profitable. It drops off a little bit after that, but I don't know about you guys, I reckon copper's gonna be trending higher in 25 years than it is today, considering that the, the Rio Tinto boss said that we're gonna need as much copper in the next 25 years as we've produced in all of human history. <laughs> Here's um, some planned site infrastructure there. It's a bit of a cartoon. The, uh, that's what it's gonna look like in section. Four caves, uh, very high lift caves, 900 metre caves. This is gonna be one of the biggest um, mines in the world. There's, well, uh, silver first. It's gonna be the biggest underground silver mine in the world. And silver's worth 1% of, uh, of the cost there. It'll be third in gold producing over 400,000 ounces a year. It'll be 15 copper. So we're talking about one of the biggest mines, underground mines on the planet. 
Our regional program is also very exciting. As I said, 72 projects right across Ecuador. This is the most underexplored segment of the best porphyry belt on Earth. We have 86 geologists on the ground. We have half of those at Cascabel. The other half are running around Ecuador exploring these areas. And already we've made some really significant uh, discoveries. Um, that's what they look like across the uh, across Ecuador there. Some of the projects are high-grade epithermal gold projects, and most of them are porphyries, but often they're associated. So in, in some of these prospects, we, we can find both. Um, Port Veneer, right down in the south, I don't have a laser pointer here, but right down in the south, that has just out, that's a, a walk-up drill target. It's about 150 metres at about 0.6% copper. A copper equivalent, and it's got a one-to-one -one copper to gold ratio, one ppm gold to one percent copper, similar to our palace. So we're really excited about that. Lueca is another outstanding porphyry target, and um, Blanca is a high-grade gold target, just eight kilometres northwest of Cascavel. So exciting days ahead for Sol Gold. Obviously, operating in a new mining jurisdiction like um, Ecuador, sustainability, um, social license is more important than than ever. And uh, that's, that's what we do best at Sol Gold. It's got us into to projects nobody's able to get into in Ecuador. Um, we do a lot of community work, improve facilities at local school. We have coffee plantations, uh, bakery, chicken farms, fish farms, all sorts of community projects. We employ about 500 people there, both, both for ENSA, Explorations Nova Mining, the company operating the project, and in these productive projects. And for each one job, there's about five or six um, indirect jobs there, so full support of the local community. Our um, baseline studies have been ongoing since we got there in 2013, so we have a really good um, database of uh, water, you know, geochemistry, things like that. Health and safety is very important. We have two on-site doctors. Uh, we have beautiful new camp facilities there and uh, recycle all our rubbish, so making a big impact in the local community. Okay, so as I said, we, this is the most significant copper gold porphyry in 10 years, uh, with, with almost 3 billion tonnes already and still growing. It does have a high-grade core. That high-grade core is what enables us to pay back in three to four years. So we'll be starting off with 1.5% copper equivalent, and that'll, be, that'll carry us through the first 10 or 15 years of production. An entire pipeline of projects, not just one world-class porphyry, an entire pipeline that most of the majors would be envious of. That's why Sol Gold is an emerging copper gold major. We have 60 million in the bank, strong support from BHP and Newcrest, who are both uh, our biggest shareholders, and um, fantastic support from the government. The president recently said last week, Ecuador will be a mining nation. It's going to be the second pillar of the Ecuadorian economy, and um, we're very happy to be based in Ecuador. Thanks. I've also got a minute left if, if anyone has a question. Oh.